Okay. We are now recorded. <laughs> Recording. You are. Okay. Sige. Uh, nawawala ako ah. Uh, this is chapter 2 of our uh, reference book. Yung strategic cost management by Mam Cabrera. Okay, so this is the content of our slides. Uh, again, you expected learning outcomes and uh, the topics. So ito yung expectations sa uh, inyo uh, at the end of the lecture. You should be able to describe the positions of the management accountant in the organization. Uh, explain the role of CFO, Chief Financial Officer, and uh, comparing it to a controller or and also the treasurer. And then uh, their responsibilities and uh, be able to understand ethical standards for management accountant. Uh, realize the need for company's code of conduct. Be familiar with typical ethical challenges that management accountants encounter. Describe international certifications for management accountants. Uh, actually, kahit hindi graduate ng BS Management Accounting, uh, these certifications is also available for you. Like if you finish BSA or BSAIS, uh, meron mga certifications na available for you. Okay, so let's go first to the organizational structure. Uh, <clears throat> importante na naiintindihan natin yung organizational structure because uh, an organization is a group of individual who join together to achieve a specific uh, goal or objective and uh, each individual the NASA organization uh, they have their own belief they, ha they have their own principles uh, they have their own means of how to do or in ways how to do things kaya uh, we need to understand uh, the structure for us to know kung sino ang may authority and their responsibilities. Otherwise, pag hindi mo uh, naintindihan yung structure ng organization where you belong, uh, you will be confused who should be followed, uh, who, who has the authority or something like that. Kaya napaka-importante ng organizational structure at importante din na naiintindihan mo yung mga authorities o yung mga functions na nasa loob nun para hindi magkaroon ng chaos, ng confusion, tsaka mga uh, unnecessary actions na hindi makakakontribute sa achievement ng goals natin as an organization. So kayo din, when you finish your degree, you will be working in an organization. Uh, dapat naiintindihan mo yung uh, lugar mo, yung positions mo, yung authority na binigay sa'yo. Actually, kahit na wala ka pa sa uh, working environment sa industry, even if you're a student, uh, you belong to an organization. Like, uh, dito sa school, uh, you are a student, you should know your uh, position or yung limitations mo, your responsibilities, para hindi magkaroon ng problema. Or if you join a student organization, you should know your uh, limits, your responsibilities also, your, your authority in the organization. Okay? So, ang focus natin is uh, nasaan ang management accountant sa isang organizational uh, structure. 
ano yung mag, ano yung role niya okay so previously sa chapter 1 we understand that uh, a management accountant provides services uh, such as advices to other departments so kung yun ang primary role niya that is to provide services or advice to other department for them to make their own decision, uh, ang kanyang authority is staff authority. That is the authority to advise but not command. It is exercised laterally or upward. So uh, normally yung management accountant kasi hindi naman siya nasa top position, nasa, nasa baba siya. Uh, so in short, yung authority niya, it's either meron siyang kapantay ng department or upward. Nagbibigay siya ng advice to the higher ups and therefore his authority is staff. But uh, meron din siyang tinatawag na line authority. Kailan yung line? Uh, yung line authority kasi is an authority to command action or give order to your subordinates. So merong uh, department yung management accountant, pwedeng sabihin natin accounting department or management accounting department, doon sa department niya meron siyang line authority. He has the authority to command kung sino man yung mga staff niya under his department. Pero kapag ka, ang titingnan mo is yung function niya o yung authority niya sa buong organization, staff authority ang function niya. Kahan, naiingayan ako doon sa text. Sandali. Okay. Uh, pero meron din naman Functional authority. Uh, minsan meron ding uh, functional authority ang mga management accountant. But this is not always his authority. Ang kanyang always authority is yung staff. Because his primary function is to provide advice to other departments for them to make decisions. Kailan tong functional authority na to? Is the right to command action laterally or downward with regards to specific function or specialty. So, again, uh, nasa ilalim si management accountant. Hindi siya nasa higher departments or yung merong mga command authority to other departments. But sometimes, uh, binibigyan siya ng special power para siya na ang mag-implement o mag-provide ng guidance sa pag-implement nung iniisip niyang proper processes or procedures to other department. Kasi in actual, uh, yung management accountant na nagbibigay ng advice on how to do things properly, nagbibigay siya ng advice sa president, sa pinakamataas. Kasi di ba, yung staff is lateral or upward. So hanggang sa president, nagbibigay siya ng advice. Hindi lang sa other department na higher than her or him. Ngayon, yung president sometimes uh, hindi siya masyadong maalam or siguro busy or meron siyang other uh, functions na kailangan niyang harapin. Pinibigyan niya ng special uh, power or function or duty yung ating management accountant na okay, ikaw na ang mag-implement uh, niyan. Since you have the expertise and you well understand yung sinasabi mo on how the procedures should be uh, running or how the process should be running, ikaw na yung bibigyan ko ng authority na you go to this department, you explain the procedure, you explain the process, and then ask them to follow your instructions. And para ma, ma I mean, sundin ka nila, uh, bibigyan kita ng authority na uh, utusan sila, sundin yung instructions mo uh, para ma-implement natin yung process of improvement na nakita mo. 
Okay, so sometimes meron din siyang functional authority. Uh, these authorities can also be applied to other departments or other functions, but uh, you just have to understand ano ba yung line, ano ba yung staff, ano yung functional. So again, line, if you have a direct power to command an action to your subordinate, that is a line authority. But if you will just be giving advice, you don't have command power, and then that is a staff authority. Uh, yung functional, hindi mo talaga yun uh, duty or part, pero you are given the right to uh, command. Uh, therefore, that is a functional authority. So that is not an always uh, functions or authority given to any department. Okay, clear ba yun? Yes po, sir. Okay, next is CFO or Chief Financial Officer and the Controller. Sa isang organization, the highest uh, position for uh, those who are working in the finance de department, such as tayo, accountant, management accounting, treasury, uh, controller, uh, at kung ano-ano pang mga positions na may kaugnayan sa finance, ang highest position na we can uh, attain is being a CFO or Chief Financial Officers. To other department, to other organization, they call it Vice President for Finance or uh, other terms, but this one is the highest, Chief Financial Officers. So ano ang responsibility ng CFO, uh, controllership, treasury, risk management, taxation, internal audit? Uh, this responsibility does not mean na, sa, I mean, siya yung magka-function ng lahat ng ito. He has the authority to assign someone or to appoint someone to be the controller, to be the treasurer, to be the director for risk management, director for taxation, and internal auditor. So, hindi naman siya, siya yun, yung CFO. But he has the uh, responsibility over those departments. Na pwede niyang, I mean, na dapat niyang uh, bantayan because that is his responsibility. Okay, so mas malawak yung responsibility niya. Now, uh, under niya, dahil responsibility niya yun, yung controllership. And therefore, he should assign a controller or sometimes sinatawag nilang chief accounting officer, CAO. So ito naman, uh, dahil sa kanya yung controllership, ito yung mga responsibilities niya. Management accounting, financial accounting, tax accounting, Accounting Information System. So, kung medyo hindi uh, maraming tax na binabayaran at hindi ganun kabusisi, pwedeng sa kanya na rin yan yung, yung tax accounting. But uh, pag malalaki na masyado yung company, sineseparate yan. Uh, merong separate na officer in charge for tax compliance. Pero kung... Uh, kaya nung CAO, yan, under sa kanya yung tax accounting. Even accounting information system, if uh, it's not too compl complicated or hindi masyadong comprehensive yung uh, pagsisave ng mga information o pag-process ng information yun, pwedeng sa'yo na rin yan. Pero kung masyado ng comprehensive, pwede rin ibukod ng tao. So, ano yung difference ng management, accounting, and financial? So, part ng role mo as a CAO or controller is to prepare financial statement for external purposes. Yung ipapasa sa BIR, sa SEC, and that is financial accounting. So, in, in short, you, have, uh, you, you should have a strong understanding of accounting standards Kasi dyan nakabase yung 
pag-prepare ng financial statement natin for external purposes. So, yung inaaral nyo na accounting standards, dito yun applicable. Yung namang management accounting, uh, hindi ito based on the accounting standard, but you should also have an understanding of preparing performance reports or management reports na uh, kailangan ng ating mga departments. So, wala itong standards, it depends on what the management needs. If he wants uh, an analysis, so wala ka namang susunding standard or format. It's up to you on, on how you creatively uh, prepare your report and ensure na maiintindihan nung humihingi ng report na yun. And other reports na hihingin sa yun na hindi uh, kailangan sumunod sa accounting standards. Okay? So, depende sa mga pangangailangan ng mga other department. Okay, so, your basic function, if you will be assigned as a controller, you need to plan and control and report and do your accounting and other responsibilities. Uh, part na mo sa, sa pag-prepare ng mga management report is yung mga paggawa ng mga forecast, ng mga budget uh, for the next uh, accounting period. Kasi kung uh, wala kang mapoproduce na plan or budget, pag hiningi sa iyan ng management, uh, wala silang magiging basihan on uh, how many to be produced for the next year or uh, uh, if there's a need for us to procure uh, new equipment or additional equipment. Kaya uh, it's your basic function that you should always do planning. Yung tipong hindi pa tapos yung taon, uh, gumagawa ka ng plan for the next year. Okay? As early as uh, the first quarter or the second quarter, uh, part yun ng trabaho mo na nagpa-plan ka. And then, since you have the understanding of how uh, things, procedures, and processes should, should be running, ikaw din yung magsiset ng control. So, even if you provide advices to other department, yung way of controlling your advice or processes na sinadjust mo, ikaw din ang magsasabi nun. Say, sasabihin mo, uh, okay, sa security department, uh, for you to be able to ensure na only employees will enter the premises, you should check IDs, or you should check the uh, any any documents that will uh, give us proof na siya ang siya ay official talagang employee ng company natin. Kung hindi niyo yan gagawin, kahit sino makakapaso sa company natin. And that is too risky for us. So, yung control na yun of checking when to check, how to check, ikaw rin naman kaya prepare nun. You should suggest. You should give advice on how to do that. Okay, so even sa procurement, ganun din, ikaw din ang mag, uh, uh, mag-provide sa kanila how to control it. Say, in, uh, sa receiving department, sabihin mo, uh, apat na kopya ang purchase order. Whenever you receive something, dapat yung isang copy ng PO meron kang hawak. So, pagdating ng goods, ng delivery natin, meron kang hawak na PO, and then you will compare the actual de delivery. Kasi pag hindi mo hawak yung PO, anong basihan mo na yan na nga yung binibili natin? In terms of quantity, in terms of quality, wala kang mapagbabasihan. So, every time there's a delivery, you should hold, you should have a copy of the purchase order para meron ka mapagkumparahan ng nire-receive mo. So, even the controls, say din yan, ikaw ang magsiset niyan. Kaya kailangan uh, malawak ang 
unawa mo sa uh, operation ng negosyo. Otherwise, how can you provide control kung di, ikaw mismo hindi mo naiintindihan kung paano gumagana yung kumpanya. And then reporting, uh, that's your basic function. You should provide reports. Check your controls kung merong mga variants, kung merong uh, mga hindi nakakasunod, yung mga yung mga trends niyan, uh, ikaw din ang mag-report niyan. So part din ng function mo sa reporting is your uh, creativity. Kasi you should also understand that uh, not all managers are accountant. So yung iba, mga takot sa numbers. Uh, so therefore, ikaw din yung mag-iisip ng paraan na yung report mo ay hindi kakatakutan at uh, madali nilang may intindihan, i-embrace nila. Kasi pagka gumawa ka ng report tas sa isip mo, uh, naiintindihan mo siya, naka-format siya ng uh, puro numbers, sa isip mo lang yun, sa na naiintindihan mo. Pero yung manager na pinagpasahan mo, hindi niya naiintindihan yun. So you should also be creative and you should know your manager, yung mga managers na pinagpapasahan mo ng report so that you could have an idea on how to report things kasi yun na nga, hindi nila may intindihan lahat. Hindi lahat ay uh, accountant. Hindi lahat ng manage, manager ay accountant. So you should uh, know and understand yung way of proper reporting. And then, of course, accounting... Uh, hindi lang ito uh, debits and credits or yung pag uh, monitor mo ng income or transactions. You should also account for other uh, non-financial transactions such as uh, yung rate ng turnover. Yan, ina-account po din yan. Diba? Part of your function is scorekeeping. So, uh, that is also accounting. And of course, other responsibilities, if you will be assigned to do some uh, assessment or like uh, inventory management or other other responsibilities like credit and collections, mga ganyan. So, minsan nabibigyan ka rin ng uh, function na ganyan because, again, uh, the assumption of the management is you have a good knowledge about uh, how to do things properly. Kaya ka nga, control, controller. You know how to control. Uh, alam mo kung paano makatipid, alam mo kung paano mas mabilis ang proseso, mas magaan ang proseso. So, lahat nung... Uh, outside your uh, department, ang assumption nila, magaling ka. Kaya, there will be some instances they will be giving you some other responsibilities. Like, uh, kunyari, merong parafol. Oh, ikaw din ang magbe-verify nun. Kunyari, may gina-judge. Oh, ikaw din magbe-verify nun kung tama yung computation nila. So, mga ganun, may mga other responsibilities na binibigay sa iyo. Okay, if you wanted to become a controller, ano daw yung mga qualifications na kahanapin sa'yo para maging controller ka? Uh, for, I mean, uh, we are just discussing this because you might be interested to uh, be a controller or work on, uh, work on, to be like this, okay? Pero I'm not saying na uh, dito lang ang babagsakan natin. When you finish your degree, you can be in other positions. Uh, hindi lang accounting ang buhay. Marami pang pwede mag- Gusto mo mag-artist ka, pwede naman. Okay? So, paano maging controller? Uh, ito yung mga hinahanap nila. 
we should have an excellent technical foundation in accounting in finance uh, and finance with an understanding and thorough knowledge of accounting principles. Yan. So, yung mga gustong maging magaling na magaling sa accounting, yan, pwedeng-pwede kang maging controller. Uh, yung, I, I mean, uh, maybe you should uh, I mean, recognize the description used such as excellent technical foundation. So, hindi lang basta good uh, technical foundation, you should have an excellent technical foundation. Magaling na magaling ka sa accounting. Kaya nga kanina, di ba, sabi ko, they assume na you know everything or, or, or you know better than us. Kaya uh, normally they will ask you, they will give you other responsibilities. You should have an understanding of the principles of planning, organizing, and control. Yung mga nasabi ko kanina, no, na, uh, talagang mataas ang expectations sa'yo pag controller ka eh. Marunong kang magplano, uh, alam mong gumawa ng budget, alam mong manghula ng uh, scientific. I mean, you can do scientific uh, forecasting. Yun bang nakaw-compute mo yung future? Di ba? Hindi lahat ay uh, marunong yan. Paano mo nagawa na mas nasabi na ganito may igim benta? Tapos magugulat pa sila, tumama yung hula mo. Almost the same, di ba? So, uh, yan ang expectations sa iyo. You should have an understanding and principles of planning, organizing, and control. O itong isa, yung number three, uh, a general understanding of the industry. So, you don't have to have an excellent, a well-detailed understanding, but a simple general understanding of the industry uh, in which the company compete in the social, economic, and political forces involved. So, wag mo nang, hana, wag mo nang alamin yung mga maliliit na detalye like uh, sino yung kongresista, uh, anong mga issue nila. Okay, so dun ka lang sa nakaka-affect dun sa company. If I mean, but uh, do not uh, have a zero knowledge. General understanding lang is okay. Uh, what is happening in the politics that might affect your company, like, uh, what, like what had happened to ABS-CBN. Mga ganun lang. Huwag mong masya. Hindi kailangang detalye na alam na alam mo lahat. Kung hindi... Uh, alam mo lang kung ano yung uh, focus ng government ngayon. Uh, they want compliance to all taxes. Mga ganun lang. Okay? Also, yung other factors or forces like social and economic so, uh, forces, dapat you should have a general understanding of it. So, halimbawa, yung uh, price in the market, uh, kailangan meron ka understanding dyan. Uh, yung market saturation, meron na bang mga ganyan product like yung binoproduce natin? Kung wala pa, ano yung chances na bibilhin nila yan? Mga ganun lang. Okay, even social, like uh, do we accept uh, ano yun? PWD in our company, uh, the way they handle uh, employees, mga ganon. So, general understanding lang because you will be asked to provide them advice and also control. So, paano mo yan mapoprovide kung wala ka namang understanding on their uh, functions. So, kung sa HR yung nangihingi sa'yo, kailangan na itindihan mo din yung social forces na yun. Okay. And then, or ito yung description niya, a thorough understanding of the company, including its technologies, product, policies, objective, even history of the organization. Kasi mahirap naman, pinasok mo yung isang kumpanya, and then, wala kang pake doon sa kumpanya. 
you don't even know the history. Baka mamaya, uh, yung great-great son na uh, apo ng CEO, hindi mo pala kilala, nakasabay mo na sa elevator. So, uh, tapos nagkaroon ng situation, eh, hindi okay yon. So, you should know it, you should have a thorough understanding of, your, of the company. Uh, its technologies, even the product. Baka may, hindi mo alam yung pinoproduce nyo. Uh, may, mali din yun. Dapat meron kang uh, thorough understanding. Especially policies. Okay. Other, fun, uh, other qualifications. You should have ability to communicate with all levels of management. And a basic understanding of the other financial problems relating to engineering, production, procurement, industrial relations, and marketing. Kita mo, ang lawak ng expectations sa'yo, even engineering. Uh, paano minimeasure in the inventory yung mga buhangin, yung mga... Baka maya sa isip mo, tabu-tabuin mo na lang siya para mabilang po ilang tabo. Ah, mali yun. Okay? So, dapat meron kang kakayanan na mag-provide ng solution to their problems. And hindi lang accounting yung problems nila. So, even engineering, production, even industrial relations and marketing, they will be asking you. Okay? Kaya... Uh, marunong kang makipag-communicate, marunong kang magsalita, uh, mag-articulate. Kaya, you know, part of our training sa accountancy is uh, the communication skills. Kasi you will be preparing a report and you will be reporting it to the, to the management or even to the president. If you don't know how to speak and explain and uh, choose the correct words, eh, paano natin mare-report yung dapat natin i-report? Okay, kaya uh, yung mga training natin na uh, you should have, I mean, you should answer or provide the correct uh, spelling for a word, that's part of the training. Kasi kailangan natin yan. Eh. And, you know, uh, I've been in the academy for more than 10 years and uh, sa mga nakakausap ko mga nasa industry uh, that hires CPAs or new, new accounting graduate or new CPAs, ang uh, comment nila is they don't know how to communicate. They are very good in numbers. Uh, they know how to compute. They know how to solve problems. But the problem is they don't know how to report. If they will be asked to present yung uh, result or any analysis that they have that they do, yun ang problema. Kinakabahan. Uh, they, they cannot find the right words to use. And sometimes yung nagamit, mali pa yung words yun ang nagiging problem natin. And uh, I think that's the norms maybe because uh, I think they, there's a parang connotation na when you are good in numbers, you are somehow not good in uh, English or sa communication. Pero uh that should not be a reason or a license for us to just embrace uh, what is being taught of us. Uh, you should develop yourself on how to uh, communicate well, learn how to do reporting, mga ganyan. Kasi, again, hindi nga lang tayo magko-compute. Hindi yung pagka-print ng papel o ng financial statement, bigay mo na okay na yun, bahala na silang umintindi. Ay, hindi ganun. You will be questioned. You will be asked to pre to present, to speak up. Okay, kaya uh, you should have a good communication skills if you wanted to be a controller. 
ability to express ideas clearly in writing or in making informative presentation. Yun yung sinasabi ko, no? Uh, kaya, uh, siguro kung meron tayong classmates na madaldal, pwede naman yun i-enhance yung kadaldalan niya na uh, mag-practice na siya maging articulate, maging uh, good presenter. Kasi part yan nung uh, skills na hinahanap sa atin sa mga graduate ng accounting. Sige sir, Bindi, practice na ako. Ano no? A practice na kasi. <laughs> Oo, practice lang. I mean, uh, di ba sabi nga, practice makes perfect. So, as early as now, you can start talking in English, speaking in English para masasanay ka. Or kung gusto mo naman, uh, pwede rin nire-record. Actually, sa, <laughs> sa board exam, uh, meron din silang mga tanong na ganyan. Grammar. Hinahaluan na nila ng mga ganong klaseng tanong. So, uh, wag niyong pabayaan din yung English subject niyo, Kasi ngayon sinasama na nila yan sa board because they find it necessary. Like I've said, part of your work is to report, is to express yourself. Pero kung hindi mo yan magagawa, nakapasa ka nga ng CPA, CPA ka nga, hindi mo naman ma-express. Uh, say nag-practice ka, pinatawag ka ng BIR, and the BIR will ask you to explain kasi ang unang gagawin diyan dialogue eh tapos nung sa ah, okay mahirap hindi mo ma-express yung sarili mo kaya uh, part yan ng training natin uh, you should learn how to express yourself and then ability to motivate others to achieve positive actions and result yan no uh, this is, uh, I mean, this has something to do with your personality, with your character, with your, uh, uh, I mean, attitude. Kasi, you know, merong mga taong, yes, CPA, uh, with license and all, pero pagkausap mo, hindi ka ma-motivate, parang bossy, parang uh, sinusukat ka or uh, basta natatakot ka. Hindi, hindi siya marunong mag-motivate. Hindi encouraging. Okay? You know, there's, there's an art of how to motivate people or encourage people na uh, you will get what you want, pero uh, na-encourage mo siya to do what he must do. Okay, yung hindi ka na natatakot or hindi ka nakatakot. Uh, parang kumikinta ba ako dito? Uh, alimbawa, ano? Uh, I ask you, oh, we will have a quiz. Kung hindi ko siguro sinabing, madali lang yun, kaya nyo yun, or uh, simple lang siya, konti lang siya, I think you will not be encouraged to uh, answer. Pero, kung hindi ko sinabi, no? pero kung sina narinig mo, ay madali lang daw, o konti lang daw, or uh, yun nga, madali lang daw, you will not be encouraged, pero, di ba? Pero kung sin nung sinabi ko na, kung ang sinabi ko lang, may quiz, bahala kayo dyan, basta may quiz. Uh, mahirap, or tingnan ko lang kung papasa kayo. Mga ganun, <laughs> hindi ka may encourage. So, dapat marunong kang uh, mag-encourage na makukuha mo yung gusto mo, pero hindi naman sila natakot sa'yo. Okay? Ay, wala na sa'yo yung mga ganyan. 
Eh din sabi ni sir, madali lang ang exam eh. Hindi naman totoo. Ang tawag doon na prank ka, na prank. Karamihan na din kami ng ganyan. Uh, at least na encourage ka, di ba? Sabi na, ay, at madali lang pala. Nung sinasagot mo na, hirap na hirap ka pala. Uh, di ba? So, at least na na motivate ka to uh, do the exam. <laughs> yung nga lang, no? Hindi positive yung result. Anyway, so that's a skills also. Uh, how to motivate people. Okay, sandali ha. Dali lang ha, niya lang higap eh. Okay. Next is CFO versus treasurer. So, Again, under ng Vice President for Finance or CFO is yung treasurer natin. So, pwede siyang i-appoint separately. Uh, our basic understanding of a treasurer is ingat yaman or the one who holds all the funds. And that is true even to big companies you are in charge of the custody of funds. Ikaw yung ingat yaman, you should uh, uh, hold the cash. Pero syempre, hindi yan literal na kahit saan ka magpunta, daladala mo yung barya, daladala mo yung mga pera. You should be the one to manage uh, on where are you going to put the cash uh, either in the banks or maybe if you have vaults, uh, ikaw yung may access to that vault kasi ikaw yung ingat yaman. Okay? So even uh, if you put it on the bank, ikaw din yung merong uh, access doon, ikaw yung signatory doon because you are the treasurer. So responsibility mo yung in and out doon sa bank account natin. Uh, you should also, I mean, you have the responsibility also to choose which bank are you going to put your money. Sa'yo din yan. Okay. So, meron lang siyang mga other uh, responsibility na hindi natin pa siguro uh, ano yun, ina-assume na. Ay, sa kanya rin pala yun. Like fund procurement investments of funds and other operating responsibilities so uh, if there are projects that needs to be funded part yun ng responsibility mo ikaw ang maghahanap ng pagkukunan ng capital natin or if the company is uh, i mean they, they have a plan or is selling some uh Ang tawag doon, debt securities or investment funds, they are buying investments, ikaw din ang mag-handle noon. Okay? So, yan yung mga responsibility. Basta may kaugnayan sa pera, money matters, sa iyo lahat yun as a treasurer. Uh, uh, meron ka din namang chance na magkaroon ng assistant treasurer. Pwede rin naman yun. Pero uh, his function is just to assist you. Your primary, I mean the primary responsibility rest to you. So sa'yo pa rin yung nakapangalan, ikaw pa rin yung signatory. Uh, yung assistant mo, just to assist you. Maybe uh, taga-compute lang siya, taga-monitor lang siya, taga update lang siya so yun yung function niya uh, ano pa ba i think that's it for the treasurer okay 
uh, recap tayo nung kalahati ng natapos natin. Describe the position of the management. Yes, it's either line, but primarily staff. Sometimes siya ay functional. Ano ang role? Explain the role of the and the relationship between the CFO. Uh, okay. Yung CFO ang pinaka-boss niya. Okay. Uh, siya, as a controller, is in charge of management accounting, financial accounting, tax, and uh, information system. Sa kanya yung mga gawain na yun. Si CFO, manage lang, command lang siya. Describe the function and responsibilities of the controller as the top management accountant. Yun, no, it's either uh, for your department, meron kang line authority. You have the right to command sa department mo. Explain the rule of the religion. Okay. CFO and treasurer. Okay. Okay. So, yan yung, I think you have this already. Uh, I mean, we have discussed this already. Ingat yaman. Okay, let's go to ethics. Ethics for management accountant. Practitioners of management accounting and financial management shall not commit, commit acts contrary to this Act by others within their organization. Okay. Uh, ano nga organization yun? International Management Accountant. Uh, they are the one who uh, promulgate the ethical standards for management accountant. Can we pause for a while? So, I need to drink. Sige lang po, sir. Oo. Uh, break muna. Iinom lang ako. Ba't to i-pause? Napapause ba ang record? Okay, not. Stop lang. Sabili, ha? Iinom lang ako. Bilis lang ito.
Hey, um, I'm back. So, hello. Okay, uh, so like I've said, no, uh, ang proponent ng ethical standard is yung international management accountant. And uh, ito yung, I mean, yung ethical standard na yun is divided into two. Yung isa is the general standard, the general ethical standard. And then yung isa is about... Uh, uh, yung conflict, if there are conflict of interest, paano mo siya i-resolve. So, generally daw, if you are a management accountant, ito yung mga ethical standard na in-expect in sa'yo. You should have competence. Uh, you should practice confidentiality. And then, you should have integrity. And, uh, you should be objective at all times. Ano yung competence? Uh, like we have discussed, medyo comprehensive yung assumption sa'yo na uh, you should have a technical knowledge on in accounting. And then yung iba, uh, thorough knowledge, yung iba naman general knowledge. So, uh, whenever uh, you are engaged to uh, prepare a report on something, an expectation you have the competency to prepare that report. Okay, to provide the solution to a problem. And then, uh, since you will be exposed to uh, the company's processes and procedures, any information that you will be obtaining, uh, dapat daw, you know how to handle it. You, you will not be disclosing it to anyone for your own gain. Uh, you know how to uh, keep the uh, confidential information to yourself. Uh, magkakaroon lang naman ng requirement for you to disclose it if there's a, uh, a subpoena from the court for you to disclose it. If there's an order from the court, uh, you should disclose that information. Kung wala pang order, you don't have to disclose it. Okay? And then, integrity. Uh, ito yung, this is something to do with uh, the way we uh, uh, engage ourselves to uh, others kasi uh, for you to have integrity huwag kang mai-involve sa something na makakasira sa image ng isang management accountant or sa profession so uh, lagi nating pangangalagaan ng ating pangalan kasi yan yung uh, isa sa mga standards na, nat na dapat nating sundin, we should have integrity. Bakit kasi importante yun? Again, you are providing advice. You are providing uh, solutions to a problem. If you will lose integrity, how can they trust you na whatever is your telling to us or advice that you are giving will work? Eh, kung nakikita naman namin na uh, hindi kakatiwatiwala so, paano yun no? so, napaka importante ng uh, integridad kasi we are providing advice para maniwala sila sa iyo you should have uh, integrity to yourself okay so ingatan mo ang sarili mo do not allow yourself to be engaged in something that will uh, taint your integrity. And then, you should be objective at all times. Yung wala kang kinikilingan. 
uh, even if uh, it is painful for you, as long as it is objective, uh, yun yung dapat mong sundin or gawin. Because, again, if you will not be objective, yung integrity mo will suffer. Kasi uh, meron kang pinagbigyan o meron kang kinikilingan. Kaya hindi okay yon. So, uh, at all times, we should be objective in our decisions or in any advice that we will provide. Okay, this is the second part, yung resolution of ethical conflict. Again, the ethical standard is composed of two parts. The, the first one is the general ethical standard, and then this one is the resolution to any ethical conflict. In case now, you will be involved in, uh, an, uh, in an ethical conflict. Ano daw yung steps na gagawin mo? Okay, so even the standards provide you the procedures on how to deal your conflict or your issues. So, uh, ano daw ang steps na to? Follow the established Doble. Follow the established policies of the organization bearing on the resolution of such conflict. In short, if there is a policy or procedures on how to uh, deal any conflict in the organization, yun daw muna ang sundin natin. For example, sa atin sa school, no, kung merong, meron naman tayong student handbook, so if there is any uh, chaos or uh, situation na na-involve ka, say, nag-cheat ka, di ba, nag-screenshot ka, tapos sinishare mo sa classmate mo, okay, may procedure na dapat sundin doon on how to, to uh, deal with that conflict. Say, nag-cheat ka sa exam. So, uh, yun daw muna ang sundin natin. Follow that procedures first. Okay? So, discuss the problem with your immediate superior except when it appears that the superior is involved. So, uh, may na-discover kang conflict. Sinundan mo yung procedure. Pero dun sa procedure ng company, uh, kailangan mong sabihin sa superior mo. Pero ang problema mo, yung superior mo ang susumbong mo talaga kasi siya yung merong uh, unethical uh, situation or actions na ginawa. Kaya uh, siya talaga yung isusumbong mo. Ang problema dun sa procedure, siya yung una mong pasabihan. Eh, nakalagay sa ating standards, Yes, you should talk to your immediate superior only if hindi siya involved. But, kung involved yung superior mo, ah, you, you should not discuss to him. Bakit? Eh, pag sinayo mo sa kanya, di sa kanya pa lang, uh, makakat na yun, hindi na yun mare-resolve. Okay? Tapos, magkakaroon kayo ng conflict. Nasabihin niya, anong sinasabi mo? Ako ang boss dito, and so on and so on. So, uh, pag, pag involve yung boss mo, do not discuss to him the problem. What are you going to do is, in which case, the problem should be presented initially to the next higher managerial level. So, ang sabihan mo, yung susunod na mas mataas sa kanya, wag yung superior mo. In case lang na-involve siya. Okay, and then, in case hindi uh, nagkaroon ng satisfactory resolution, hindi na resolve, and uh, nadala mo na sa higher level, next higher level. So gagawin mo, hanapin mo ulit kung meron pang next higher level managerial uh, position. So sa kanya naman. So hindi nakuha dun sa next susunod na higher hanggang sa pataas ng pataas. Okay, up to the point na makarating ka sa president or the CEO. Okay, 
in case na ang involved naman is yung pinakamataas na, yung CEO na involved. Okay, so ang procedure natin, do not talk to the person involved. Kung siya yung pinaka-highest in the position, in the structure, do not talk to him. Ang gagawin mo, uh, the acceptable reviewing authority may be a group such as the audit committee, the executive committee, the board, okay, either board director or board of trustee, or the owner of the company. So, again, yung president naman kasi, sometimes it's just an elected position among the board. So, the highest is the board. Or, uh, if it is uh, uh, a single proprietorship, yung owner mismo ang kakausapin mo. So, in-appoint lang niya yung president, uh, pwede mong kausapin yung pinaka-owner. Or, uh, kung yan ay corporation, merong audit committee, you can talk to the audit committee and disclose to him or talk talk to them about the problem na, na, na nakita mo that involves the CEO. Okay? And then, clarify the relevant ethical issues by confidential discussion with an objective advisor to obtain an understanding of possible course of action. So, uh, I know sa discussion natin, it seems like that easy, but in actual, it's not easy, you know, kasi president yung alam mong involved. Eh, sinong ka ba? Management accountant, nasa ilalim nga yung position mo. So, uh, for you to feel uh, relieved or uh, sure of what your next step will be, you can talk to someone na objective. An advisor, maybe a lawyer. In next bullet natin is consult your own attorney as to legal obligation and rights concerning the ethical conflict. You can uh, consult a lawyer of what you should do or what will be your next move. Kasi ang, info, ang involved na yung president. So, hanap ka ng objective advisor ha, hindi kung sino-sinong advisor ang yung susuhulan ka pa, yung bubuyuin ka, eh, hindi ganun. Yung someone na bibigyan ka ng payo na hindi bias, uh, walang kinikilingan kung hindi ko ano lang yung tama. Okay? Find an objective advisor or you can simply go to your attorney uh, ask for an advice. Okay. If the ethical conflict still exists after exhausting all levels of internal review, there may be no other recourse on significant matters than to resign from the organization and to submit an informative memorandum to an appropriate representative of the organization. Okay, ito yung isa sa mabigat. Uh, na, nagawa mo ng lahat, na, na exhaust mo ng lahat, nasaya mo na sa audit committee, nasaya mo na sa board, and yet the board did not take any action at all to uh, resolve the issue. Nagko-continue pa rin yung... Uh, pandaraya or any unethical practices, uh, you don't have any other recourse but to resign, to remove yourself uh, to that organization. Kasi, again, what of our, one of our uh, ethical standards is to maintain integrity. And that means you should not involve yourself or allow yourself to be involved to any uh, uh, issues na may impair yung integrity mo as an accountant or as a management accountant. Okay, so you may be receiving a high, a highest salary as compared to uh, other works that you have before, pero unethical naman, I mean, nandun pa rin yung conflict, 
uh, madadamay ka dun sa hindi magandang uh, image ng company. No? Uh, I mean, lahat naman siguro tayo aware of the issue about feel health, mga ganyan, no? Yan, involved na talaga yung mga nasa taas, ano, CEO, yung president, even, anyway, so yun, no? involved na sila. Uh, yan yung mga klase ng uh, situation na you should think twice. Uh, Mag, kasi pag napasok ka, magiging kaisa ka. Eh. I mean, hindi mo yun maiiwasan. Although, alam na alam mo sa sarili mo, you're not involved to any of that situation. Pero, uh, hindi mo mapiplease ang lahat ng tao sabihin nila. Eh, kung yung president nagagawa yun, how much more hanggang sa ilalim? Di ba? So, uh, para maiwasan mo yon, maybe you should resign. Maybe you should uh, uh, ano yan? distance yourself to this kind of organization. Okay? But I'm not saying na wala na talagang pag-asa yun. Uh, it's just that uh, it will be resolved later on. It's just that uh, Kung hindi yan uh, ihihinto or hindi pa nanagutin, the image will be affected. Uh, yun, no? Mahirap nang itayo yung ibalik yung trust kapag gaganin. So, ang lalim naman nun. Uh, company's Code of Conduct. Again, we are an organization composed of different individuals with different belief, principles, and even faith, even uh, attitude, characters, magkakaiba tayo. Tapos nagsama-sama tayo. So yung okay sa akin, kasi yun yung belief ko, yun yung principles ko, may not be acceptable to you. May not be uh, relevant to you or uh, applicable to you kasi iba yung means mo, iba yung ways mo, iba yung belief mo. So, para daw hindi magkaroon ng conflict between individuals in an organization, dapat merong company's code of conduct. Kung baga, yes, you have your own belief, you have your personal principles, but you are in this organization. You are in this company, and this company follows this conduct, this code. And therefore, you should also follow this. If this is against your principles or your belief, and you cannot abide on this code, then, then maybe you should not be uh, in this organization. Because how can we achieve our goals if you cannot follow this uh, code? And we believe this code will contribute to the achievement of our goals. So, kaya, uh, merong company's code of conduct for everybody to follow. Kasi otherwise, kung wala yan, yun, kanya-kanya tayo ng paraan, eh, hindi natin ma-achieve yung goals natin. Okay, uh, you have two cases on your book. Pag-usapan natin itong cases na to. Roger Cruz, a management accountant, knows that reporting a loss for a software division will result in yet another series of layoffs and has concern about the commercial potential of softwares for which R&B costs are currently capitalized as an asset rather than being shown as an expense for internal reporting purposes. The division manager argues that the new product will be successful and profitable but presents little evidence to support her argument. The last two products from these divisions have been uns unsuccessful. The management accountant has many friends in the division and wants to avoid 
a personal confrontation with the division manager. Okay? Naintindihan niyo ba yung situation na to? Andiyan pa ba kayo? Yes po, sir. Yes, naintindihan niyo yung situation? Opo, opo. Okay, very good. Uh, yung department na to, meron silang dinin-develop na software. The problem is, uh, yung mga nakaraan niyang dinidevelop, hindi naman naging successful eh, hindi naging mabenta. So, alam natin na yung R&D in accounting, uh, if there is no future uh, identifiable na uh, ano yan? Ano yan? <laughs> na proof na it will generate income to us, uh, hindi natin pwedeng i-capitalize. Dapat yan i-expense outright kasi wala ka ng uh, let, maybe you should maybe we should only use yung concept of assets. Assets are uh, resources of an enterprise na meron kang assumption that there is an inflow of economic benefits. So kung yung kinakapitalize mong R&D will not uh, provide any economic inflow to the company, bakit mo ikakapitalize? Di ba? I-expense outright na lang. At sinasabi nung manager, eh, uh, sure yan, gigita yan. Eh, yun yung unang dalawa mo, hindi naman kumita eh. Lugi. So, hindi natin yan dapat i-capitalize. We should expense it outright. So, it will test your competency uh, as to uh, your uh, ano yan? technical knowledge in accounting. Alam mo ba yun? So, dapat alam mo yun, no? Na kung wala naman palang economic benefit, na uh, ba't mo pa i-capitalize? Expense mo na lang yan. So, it will test your competency. And then, uh, kung i-expense naman natin at uh, uh, ipapatigil na lang yung R&D na yan dahil wala namang kasiguraduhan na magiging successful yung product, it will result to a layoff of employees. May mga matatanggal na empleyado. At ang problema mo, yung mga matatanggal na yon ay mga friends mo na nandun sa divisions na yon. So, if you will insist to record the R&D as an expense dahil walang proof of uh, economic inflow, the management may decide to lay off these employees and they are your friends. So, tinetest yung objectivity mo dito uh, kung paano mo siya didesisyonan. So, it may be painful to you kasi makikita mo yung mga friends mo, mawala ng trabaho. But, uh, hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin na, o sige, i-capitalize na nga lang natin, okay na din. Hindi naman pwede, di ba? Because you know for a fact na walang, walang proof na mag-generate yan ng income. So, uh, I think what you should do is talk to your friends na this is the situation and I'm sorry I cannot... Uh, uh, give them an advice to continue uh, capitalizing this expense because alam naman natin na walang economic benefit. So I suggest look for a new job uh, para hindi sila mabigla. You can talk to your friends. Okay? So dapat objective tayo. Medyo painful kaya lang that's our job. Okay, next is case B, a packaging supplier. Ito maganda rin, maganda rin itong case na ito. A packaging supplier bidding for a new contract offers the management accountant of the purchasing company an all-expense-paid weekend to the Boracay Resort. 
the supplier does not mention the new contract when giving the invitation. The accountant is not a personal friend of the supplier. He knows cost issues are critical in approving the new contract and is concerned that the supplier will ask the details about the bids by competing packaging companies. Okay. Uh, ito, the situation is the company is looking for suppliers of a packaging, uh, I don't know, maybe machine or maybe some contract that, that uh, the purpose is to make a packaging uh, project. But uh, the way they do it is through bidding, meaning they will be inviting different suppliers and then they will be placing some bids and then uh, the company will choose among the bids kung sino yung lowest cost na uh, mapipili nila. Of course, the bidders, they don't know how much is the bids of their competitors or other suppliers. Uh, basta magbibigay ka lang ng uh, bid mo, naka-close yun, hindi nila alam kung magkano yung bid ng kabila o ng supplier kasi ang pipili ng company is the lowest cost. And the only person who can see these bids or even if he doesn't have the, op the access to that, uh, the person who knows uh, how much is the cost of this uh, project is the management accountant. So ang ginawa nung isang supplier, binigyan siya ng gift. Sabi niya, bigyan kita ng all expense paid weekend to Boracay Resort. But upon giving the uh, hospitality, I mean the, the privilege, hindi naman nagsabi yung supplier na uh, pwede bang magtanong tungkol dun sa cost. Wala naman siyang sinabing ganun. Okay, so basta binigay lang niya. So ikaw naman, sa isip mo, at hindi mo siya friend, ha? Hindi mo friend yung supplier na yun. Nagulat ka na lang. Binibigyan ka ng all expense paid to Boracay. Ikaw naman, sa isip mo, uh, okay, hindi naman siya nagtanong eh. Binibigyan lang naman niya ako, parang niregaluhan lang niya ako. Wala siyang tinatanong. Wala siyang sinabi. Basta binigyan lang ako. Okay? So sa, sa isip mo, mukhang okay lang. Diba? Pero... Uh, this is a test of uh, your integrity. This is a test uh, of how are you going to deal with the supplier. Uh, although wala siyang sinabi, hindi kumibo, basta binigyan ka lang. Uh, you know for a fact na once you accepted this gift, uh, magkakaroon ka ng uh, feeling of uh, consideration to this supplier. So when you open the bids and you find yung mga offers nila, uh, ikaw, as, as the management accountant, you will have this feeling na, ay, niregaluan ako yun, kaya naman. And then the supplier, we have the same feeling na, nako, Binigyan ko ito, ha? dapat ako mapili nito. Mga ganun, no? meron nang magkakaroon ng expectation. Kaya, for you to avoid this situation, uh, it would be better for you not to accept that uh, invitation. Do not accept kasi, again, uh, mapupunta ka sa situation, situation na kailangan mong mamili. At para maging objective yung pagpili mo, wala kang kinikilingan, dapat wala kang tinanggap, wala kang uh, maging konsiderasyon. Eh, kahit pa wala namang siyang sinasabi na pwede ba ako ang piliin mo, wala siyang sinabi o tinanong na magkano yung presyo, magkano yung cost, it will create uh, a cloud of uh, doubt na yung gagawin mong pagpili will be objective. No, kasi meron ka ng uh, uh, 
ano yun, naunang consideration. Let's say, sabihin natin na ang nanalo talaga is yung nagbigay sa yun ng all expense paid. Do you think they will uh, ang tawag yan, believe na talagang naging objective ka eh hindi naman nila nakita yung cost ng uh, bids ng other competitors. Siyempre, hindi, di ba? Isipin nila, eh kasi naman binigyan ng ano eh, all expense paid. So, yun, magkakaroon ng doubt sa objectivity mo. So, uh, it would be better not to accept this gift. Okay, kasi, uh, ayun na nga, in case siya naman ang manalo, magkakaroon din ng doubt. In case na hindi siya manalo, meron pa rin doubt. Dahil uh, sasabihin naman nung nagbigay sa'yo, kulang pa ba yun? Or uh, siguro may, ma, may binigay na mas malaki yung kabila. Kaya gano'n kasi tinanggap mo naman yung kanya. So in short, tumatanggap ka din sa iba. Okay, so para talagang walang issue, do not accept the gift. Okay, I think sa book, they, uh, I mean, the author mentioned that you may accept provided it is approved by your superior and it undergoes the process of evaluation whether it is acceptable or not. So kung meron namang ganun and the company allows it, uh, as long as sumunod dun sa protocol, okay, but as much as possible para iwas na lang sa... Uh, sa issue, do not accept it para uh, objective pa rin yung decision mo. Okay. Sabihin sa'yo ng classmate mo, libreng lunch. Sige mo lang sa akin yung sagot ng 1 to 5 sa quiz natin. Okay. Next is Code of Conduct. Ano yung pagutom? <laughs> Oo nga no. Eh kakatwiran mo pa. Eh, gutom naman talaga ako eh. 'Di ba? Okay lang 'yun, tanggapin ko 'yun. Wala naman siyang sinasabi. Na oh, bigyan kita cake. Para saan to? Wala lang bibigyan. Bibigyan lang kita ng cake kasi nakita ko may bigay ka sa cake. Eh. Ayun yeah. mo naman. Wala na. Ah, sa dulo pinili mo siya eh kasi naman tinanggap mo yung cake eh nagbigay ka ng nagbigay kasi sa ng cake so para ayun no medyo uh, at this point medyo natututo tayo na timbangin alin ba yung dapat at hindi kasi we should protect our integrity we should be objective at all times kaya nga parang ang oil di oil na mukha dito sa Kaya nga, you know, whenever we talk, Joshua, ikaw yung nandun sa GC ng may, mga mayors, no? Apo, sir. Uh, whenever someone uh, among the mayors will ask, uh, I always thought of, is it for all? Is it fair for all? If it is not, baka sabihin, mayroon akong kinikiligan, I should say no. Kasi, uh, it will be unfair to all. Kaya, uh, <laughs> may ka. Wag na. Basta, uh, let us always be fair to all. Yun na lang ang parating nang iisipin para uh, yung decisions mo is for the benefit of all. Code of conduct on the international level. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the standard for uh, all the accountant. Actually, dito sa Pilipinas, we also follow the guidelines on ethics for professional accountant issued by uh, IFAP. Uh, wag mo nalang sabihin niya sa kapwa mo na you, I am IFAP. Okay. So, uh, we adopted this ethical standards. Huh? So even if you work abroad, even if not, even if you're working in the Philippines, you should follow these guidelines for professional accountant. 
Kung di ka naman naging accountant, uh, pwede mo rin namang i-follow. Uh, uh, yun, yung mga diniscuss natin. Integrity, objectivity, confidentiality, and competence. Kasi ngayon, uh, nagkakaroon na ng mutual recognitions among countries. So, if you're a CPA in the, here in the Philippines, and you wanted to work abroad uh, in Asian countries, pwede na. And you will still be recognized as a CPA. Meron na, kayong, meron na ngayong tinatawag na Asian CPA. So, CPAs from, uh, say, uh, ba? Malaysia may come to the Philippines and also work here as a CPA uh, through this mutual recognition. And if that is the case, they should follow uh, the international financial accounting standard for, uh, I mean, ethical standard for accountant. Okay, let's go to this one. Uh, international certifications. Uh, when you finish your degree as BS Accountancy, aside from the CPA license, issued by PRC in the Philippines, which, which is only local certification, you can also secure other international certifications such as CMA or Certified Management Accounting. This is granted by IMA from the USA and CIA from the UK, I, I, from IIA. If you will be asking me which one is uh, ano ba? cheaper, uh, I think cheaper yung CMA as compared to CIA. But uh, it depends. Sometimes, alam nyo ba, may mga sales din, may mga sale din yan kung minsan, may mga discounted. Just recently, I received an invitation for CIA, pero abot din ng 68,000. Uh, mahal din. Okay, so in case naman, if you will be asking me which one is what, the best, the better, uh, wala naman. Yung CMA and CIA are both good certification. It depends na lang where do you intend to work. CIA is from the UK, although it is also recognized in other country. But uh, if you will be working in uh, European uh, countries, CIA is okay. Kung dun ka sa West, CNA is okay. Uh, Okay, other certifications like C80 ng ano yun, NIA is also okay. I think that is uh, granted from by uh, uh, ano yung pangalan? C, ano, C80 by uh, the UK. Tat, that, tatlo yun eh. C, ano nga? Bookkeeping, CB, Certified Bookkeeping. Uh, RCA, Registered Cost Accountant, and CAT. UK din ang nagpo-provide mo. Yun ang pinakamura na international. So, mas kaya nyo yun. And then, uh, ano pa ba yung certifications na yun? C CRFA, yun yung isa sa in-offer din sa amin. Certified Forensic Accountant. Yun, maganda din yun. And other certification, napakaraming certifications na yun. Okay? So, uh, kung mahili ka sa mga ganyan, uh, I mean, even if you're not yet a graduate of BS Accountancy, yung CB, you can take it already. Okay. Oh, you have questions? Wala, sir. Wala, napakagagaling naman talaga. Ay, may isa pala akong question, sir. Sige, go ahead. 
Kailan po yung next quiz? <laughs> yung next quiz? Next ano po? Next meeting? H- hindi, ngayon. Magka-quiz tayo ngayon. Oh. Sir, same type po. Fill in the blanks oh, and to our folks. Fill in the and to our folks. Ngayon na sa... <laughs> Yun lang. Kala ko naman. Wala ka bang question tungkol dun sa topic? Okay na. Sir, okay pa naman eh. Okay pa naman. No? Sa bagay... Oh. Uh, I think hanggang chapter 4, walang masyadong compute-compute, more on theory lang. But, uh, na- natututo ba kayo dun sa mga theory? Apo, sir. Very good. Doon sa mga, lalo na sir, doon sa mga cases, yung about sa controls. Yes. How to deal with uh, ethical issues, no? Napaka-importante yun. Okay. Uh, let me stop the, the recording para makapag-quiz tayo.